In today's episode, we're looking back at all of Monday's NBA action. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Download the app and join me on Friday to get in on the action. Locker Room, changing the way that we talk sports. Let's have a look at the uh, the action here straight into it from Monday across the NBA. First game up, we look at the Lakers and the Knicks. Good win for the Knicks, 111-96. Markeith Morris had an early trip to the locker room with a bit of an ankle issue. Came back, played 27 minutes, had 17 points, three threes, a block. And he's like 94th ranked player over the last two weeks. Uh, you could do a lot worse, um, like Aaron Gordon, by having Markeith Morris on your roster at the moment. Now, it's not going to last forever. Davis and LeBron are going to come back. But Morris is putting up pretty consistently good numbers at this stage. Schroeder. Had 21 in 37 minutes with six assists, while with Kuzma and Wes Matthews back, Taylor Horton Tucker, who was the most added player over the last day, um, went back into a, a small role. And this is, you know, a lot of people were very keen on adding him, and this is the sort of thing that I did preach some caution with. 22 minutes for Horton Tucker, 10 points, three rebounds, two assists. Streamer at best. Now, the Lakers do play tomorrow, so they play on, uh, on uh, Tuesday, so you can still have Horton Tucker, but I wouldn't say he's a must roster guy. Um, KCP had 12 points with two threes, four assists, a steal, and a block. So a very good game from KCP. That's a couple of good strong ones in a row, but I look at him more as a 14-team uh, league guy. Let's talk centers. The big avocado, Andre Drummond. 25 minutes, three points, 10 rebounds, a steal, and a block. 33% from the field, 50% from the line. He's not that good. All right, he's had a, a big game against the Nets. Stinker here. Is he a must-roster player? Yes. Is he the Lakers' best center? In my mind, categorically, no. But he's going to get the bulk of those minutes, and that's what's more important. But 30 minutes versus 25 minutes is a very big differentiator. And I think we saw again today that the Marcus Gasol out there, he, he offers something to this team. He only played five minutes, but he had three points with a three. He's not going to put up big numbers, but he's going to be an important part of what they need to do. So I think, I think Frank Vogel is going to go back to using three centers, and that's going to hurt Drummond. It's going to kill Harrell, who I think is... Jack, what do we think? Out of here. Yeah, real hard for me to get excited about Montrez Harrell going scoreless in 15 minutes. Like, real hard. Um, he had a block, missed all four of his shots, which he won't do. But it's more than minutes. Um, they're, they're in... They got a, a, Obviously, their best center is Anthony Davis. But in the playoffs, Andre Drummond is an issue. Montrez Harrell is a huge issue. They're just going to play Gasol and Davis all the center minutes. I, I'd rather Markeith Morris out there than those two blokes, to be honest. Um, I think that I think Harrell is a to me he's a pretty clear drop. You may disagree with that. That's fine. Kuzma had 14 points in 30 minutes with two blocks and two threes. He was really inefficient, Kuz, but I do think he still can hold on as a 12-team league guy. For the Knicks, the double royal Julius Randle. Really big game. Now, 39 minutes on a back-to-back -back in a game you win by 15 is, of course, lunacy, but this is the Knicks. 34 and 10, two triples, two steals and a block. Now, we never get two steals and a block from Randall. He's also been shooting under 40%, so to get 57% is amazing. This is an elite game. 54 fantasy points for Julius. Well, Nerland's Noel. This is why we don't drop him. Now, we don't care about the six points, but nine boards, four steals, two blocks. Played 30 minutes. He might play 24 minutes next game. I don't know, but that's great. Gibson had eight and 10 with two steals and three blocks, so he was at it again as well. And Noel and Gibson, they just killed Drummond and they killed Harrell in this game. Uh, Reggie Bullock goes from 30 minutes to 39 minutes to 20 minutes and back to 30 here again. 12 points with three threes. He's a streamer at best. While uh, Alfred Payton goes from 17 minutes to 27 minutes. Yeah, figure it out. You can't. It's impossible. 20 points for Payton on 75% shooting. I, I would have bet my left ball, I was going to say ball sack. I've only got one ball sack. I don't have a left and a right. Just let me assure you that. I would have bet my left nut that Alfred Payton wouldn't have shot 75% in this game. But here we are. He is not a 12-team league guy. Rowan Barrett, who'd been playing so well, played um, bad in terms of the shooting numbers. He was still a plus 18, but seven points on 18% is rough. The two steals and a block is... What is it, Sheev? A surprise, to be sure. 
but a welcome one. And a nice 75% from line. Bit of a stinker from Barrett, but he's been pretty solid uh, recently. Still not that guy that's been able to crack the top 140, though, for the season. Uh, Alec Burks, yeah, no way you can hold on to him. And Emmanuel quickly, of course, 15 minutes, five points. It is the true Tom Thibodeau way. Why would you play the guy who's the best point guard on the team? There's, there's no reason for it, clearly. But you know what? They won, so what am I going to say? I'll say plenty, actually. I don't give a shit. I'll say plenty. Um, all right. Guys, locker room. It's the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app's free to download. And once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll host a locker room again on Friday at some point, which when you follow me over there, you'll see when the time goes out. I'll also announce it on my Twitter. And finally, you can join in that conversation that you listen to here every day. Locker room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the league. You'll have a chance to chat with me. And you might even have a chance to be featured on an episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball through our locker room conversations. Be sure to join me this week on Friday. I'll be hosting the room uh, then probably in the afternoon at some point or evening. So get, go download there. Try again. Go download that locker room app. Currently available on all iOS devices. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the NBA group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Josh Lloyd48 to be notified when my room goes live. I know you don't want to miss it. I'm planning to be live again on Friday in the afternoon at some point. I can't wait to hear everyone's fantasy basketball th- thoughts. I will see you there. Locker room changing the way that we talk sports. I wish I could change the way that I speak because I'm pretty tongue-tied at the moment. But I wouldn't be tongue-tied if I was looking for a part for my car because I wouldn't want to go in and talk to old mate Mr. Mechanic at the chain auto store. Why would I waste my time and my money? And if my car's not working, how am I getting there? Pointless. RockAuto.com is a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to RockAuto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Everything you need from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The catalog is unique and it's remarkably easy to navigate. But best of all, the prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and they are the same for professionals or for do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, now we go on to the next game. We are looking at the Philadelphia 76ers with a pretty comfortable victory over the Dallas Mavericks, 113-95. Um, the Mavs were without your mate, Christos Porzingis. Porzingis. Um, it was a back-to-back. So you're predicting when Porzingis is going to sit back-to-backs or not is pretty tough because sometimes he plays them, sometimes he doesn't. But he did not play in this one. A lot of it's to do with sports science, which is great because they're planning out your know, day's rest and where those back-to-backs fit. And that's why he played that last back-to-back. So that is a little bit hard to, to judge as we move forward, though. Embiid was a monster. He played 26 minutes, 36 and 7, 14 of 15 from the line, 59 from the field. All that was missing was a block, 49 fantasy points. Great. Furky from Turkey, the elite shooting continues. 20 points in 18 minutes from Korkmaz, four threes and two steals. He's in that rigid block territory of being a a three streamer at this stage. The Thick Hogsman, Tobias Harris. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. 10 points, 4 assists, 1 steal, 2 blocks. Nice numbers. While well, Matisse Thibault, the painter, he brought in 2 steals and a block. And Ben Simmons, the shitness continues. 8, 6, and 7 with a steal in 24. I'm not saying he's a drop, but the 216th ranked player over the last 2 weeks is obviously not helping all that much. I'm still holding Simmons, but it has been uh, horrendously bad of late. Shake Milton had 10 points in his 24 minutes with 5 assists. He's not a 12-teamer, nor is Seth Curry, who had 8 points in 24 minutes there as well. They also signed Anthony Tolliver, in case you didn't know. And of course, in case you didn't know, he won't play very much at all. Luka Doncic, 32 minutes for 30, 33 minutes for 32 points. Elite from the line, which is awesome. 10 of 11, 50% from the field. The assists remain down, though. Only 4 assists here for the donk, with 1 steal and 1 block. While Finney Smith, Dodo playing alright. 12 and 11 in 35 minutes. A steal, two threes. I don't hate him as a 12-team league guy. He's only back end, but he can produce. Jalen Brunson started with Porzingis out. He did good things, 15 and 6. I think he's he's an option whenever he gets this opportunity, but this won't happen most games. KP will be next in the uh, back in the next one. While uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Get that garbage out of here! What are we doing? Like, why is he rostered in so many leagues? Nine points, three threes, 21 minutes. 
Muxy Kleber started at center. He had four fouls in about two minutes. 14 minutes total for three points. Yeah, very hard to roster him. And I don't think Josh Richardson's must roster either. He's so inconsistent. Seven points in 31 minutes. Nothing really exciting at all. Nicola Melli did jack shit. While JJ Redick made his Ma- uh, Mavericks debut, had four points in, th- in 14 minutes. He is only going to be that deeper league sort of player. Nothing really exciting to see uh, if we look long-term for old, for old JJ. Next game. We look at the San Antonio Spurs blow out the Magic 120-97. This is a game where Drew Eubanks played 20 minutes and had 10-10 and 10 with a steal and two blocks. Big game from Drew, but you know, when Gorgie Jeng's back, is Eubanks even going to play? I don't know. DeRozan, 19 points with six assists. That's solid. DeJounte had 17-5-6. and six, Solid. Derek White had 15-2-4. and four, Solid. Rudy Gay, 12-6. and six, Solid. Pirtle, 6-6 six and six with a steal and a block. Like, all really just solid performances. Absolutely nothing standing out. I am intrigued by Keldon Johnson getting 11 boards and 5 assists, but I still don't think that he's a 12-team league guy. He might not even be a 14-team league player. He's now outside the top 170 over the course of the season. But just a comfortable, comfortable victory for the Spurs, and I don't really know what there is to take away from it. From the Magic side of things, Mo Bamba came in, played 3 minutes, left the game with a hip problem. Yeah. Now... With Bumba, I was cautious with him after the, the trade, and he was the th- like the third best center on this team. Then they, you know, Ken Birch was out, and he played like 13 minutes. Then Ken Birch got waived, and I was like, oh, well, what are they going to do? Are they going to split him and Carter's minutes when Carter's clearly superior? And then Steve Clifford did a Steve Clifford thing and made the wrong call and split those minutes. But Bumba put up good numbers. And then he goes out and gets hurt again. So I, look, I don't know what to do here with Bumba. Look, it is it was absolutely 100% the right decision to add Mo Bumba. It obviously burnt you to a crisp today by having zero points in three minutes. And again, proving that Wendell Carter Jr. is the best center on this team. 15, 8, and 4 for Wendell in 30 minutes. And realistically, Bumba should not cut into Carter's minutes. But that's what was happening before. I would still hold Bumba if I added him to see what the diagnosis is on this hip injury. But I don't know how much more evidence we need to see that yeah, Carter is, is the guy that plays 30 a night. It's obvious to me. It should be obvious to most people watching, but to Clifford, it hasn't been. It's one to watch. Good game from Cole Anthony in only 21 minutes, 21 minutes 12, 12, 3, and 3. I think he's a 12-team league guy. And a great showing from RJ Hampton. 16 and 8 in 26 minutes. Now, there was no Gary Harris in this one, so that does help RJ. He's a name to watch. He's more of that like 14 to 16-team league player, but he's a name to watch for four, uh, for 12-teamers. The Shark, Dwayne Bacon. Had 14 points. Of course, it took 14 shots to get there. He had no threes, no steals, no blocks. How he gets rotation minutes is astonishing. Well, Chumura Kiki, the wheels have fallen off in a pretty big way here. Returned, was on a minutes restriction, but seven points on 27% shooting is rough. He was getting by early with a lot of usage, way more usage than I expected, and some really big shooting numbers, and they have crashed back. I still think we we have to roster him, but um, yeah, our, our expectations are tempered. Michael Carter-Williams keeps starting. Surely that can't continue. While Terrence Ross had a stinker to eight points in 25. I do think Terry is a must-roster 12-team league guy. Rob Franks, yes, that's a, that's a player. He uh, played 15 minutes here, had four and four, had some backup center minutes with Mo Bamba going down there as well. But uh, this Magic team is an absolute mess. Just feed the minutes into Cole, into RJ, and into Wendell, and get guys like Dwayne. Uh, don't worry about fantasy rosters. Get Dwayne Bacon out of the NBA. Get that garbage out of here! I know that's being harsh, and I'm playing into a meme and a bit a little bit, but he's actually he's not good at all. He should not be playing rotation minutes. There are plenty of other guys that you can be giving those minutes to, yet he keeps thieving playing time away from them. But just lean into Cole and RJ and Wendell, and let's see what they can develop. Um, yeah, let's 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 see what develops there in in that one. But uh, pretty rough stuff, I think, overall from the Magic in this game. All right. Let's go on to the next game. We're looking at the Kings and the Pelicans. Uh, some interesting things to say about this game. There was um, uh, curious lineup decisions, late scratches, mid-game injuries. The Pelicans win it 117-110 in the end. The Kings, uh, Buddy Heald was out with a COVID, non-COVID-related illness in this one, so they pushed Tyrese Halliburton back into the starting lineup, and he was like, all right. like That's just where Halliburton is at the moment. He's all right. 12 points, 6 assists, 1 steal, 31% shooting. This is why I did have him push down my draft board uh, at the time for the NBA draft. I just thought, look, he's going to be good, but is there anywhere to go? Like, how far does the ceiling go? I think we're sort of seeing that now. He came in, he played so well, and he's sort of just settling into this, I don't know, blah role. He never gets the line. He's fine shooting, but on low volume. The assists are good. His rebounds are way off at the moment. I think we're still holding him, but it is pretty rough. 
The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. <laughs> 43 minutes for Barnesy. 16 and 11, three steals, a block, three threes. He's been really good this season. That's a huge game. While 39 minutes for De'Aaron Fox, 43 points. Five triples, six rebounds, and six assists. Now, it would have been a lot better had he not gone eight of 15 from the line. Remember that little stretch where he was um, you know, shooting you know, 78, 79, 80% from the line? Well, maybe he's fixed it. Yeah, maybe not. That is horrendous. But 50% from the field is excellent. While Flaming Mo Harkless, he's got to get the nickname back. Another big minute game for Harkless. 34 minutes, 15 points, five assists, two steals. I don't hate him as a 14-team league ad especially for those defensive stats. Good game from DeLon Wright, his best game for Sacramento. 23 minutes, 12 points, 4 steals, but 23 minutes without Buddy Heald should tell you that you don't add him in 12-team leagues. And then Rashawn Holmes, played only 16 minutes and struggled. Zero points with four rebounds, had hamstring tightness, didn't return in the second half. All right, let's do it. The world. So with Holmes not there in the second half, Hassan Whiteside... No, sorry, what? I'm just I'm just getting word. No, he didn't start the second half. Actually, he didn't play a single second in the second half with Holmes out because he sucks. Now, the only thing I could say here is it probably is only one other center in the NBA that sucks more than him, and that's the bloke who replaced him, Damian Jones. 19 minutes for Jonesy. He had two points, two rebounds, two assists, an unconventional Richie Benno. Two for two, two, two. He had a steal and a block. Now, I don't think the Holmes hamstring tightness is serious. I understand there'll be plenty of you who scurry to go and add Hassan Whiteside. There's someone, and I he must be trolling me because he follows me on Twitter every time there's something mentioned about Whiteside. Man, Luke Walton, man, he's ruining his career. No, 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 no. Whiteside's doing that himself because he's not very good. But there are people who actually fully believe that Whiteside is this unbelievably good center and should be playing these huge minutes. There will be people who listen to this who disagree fundamentally with my take on him and who will say, well, I'll take the risk that if Holmes is out, I'm adding Whiteside. And nothing, there is absolutely zero denial from me that if Whiteside plays 25 minutes, he will smash the top 70, smash it. But he's not good enough to play those minutes, I don't think. I'd rather Chemezi Metu out there. I, shit, I would rather see Damian Jones out there. I don't, look, I'd say I'd rather Chris Silver out there. If the situation was where Holmes is like pinged his hammy and it's it's big time and he's out for four weeks, I probably would take the flyer and white side because Walton could just say, Fuck, we just got to get him out there. We've got to play him and let's see what we do. And then that would work out. Even though he'd probably be horrendous, he would put up fantasy stats. But with the potential you might get one game and he might play 15 minutes in that game, I'm not, I'm not really sure that it's worth it. Weigh that decision up yourself. I I don't I don't think it's worth it. For the Pelicans, what a curious decision from Stan Van Gundy. Last game, Najee Marshall, man, he's our team MVP. What a performance. What a great effort. Your your reward, Najee, is to be benched for, for bloody Wes Owundu. Owundu played 27 minutes, who'd be a, been a DMPCD in the last two games. He had 11 and 7, which is not bad for Owundu standards, to be honest. 75% shooting, that's great. He had a block. I, I just don't understand that, though. I also don't understand Kyra Lewis, who comes in, plays 15 minutes, goes bananas, has 11 points, 3 assists, 1 steal. Looks great out there. 29 usage, plus 14. And then you've got Eric Bledsoe going around. I don't know what he's doing. Tugging on his dick so he can't dribble. What's he doing? 13 points, 27% shooting, 5 assists, 2 steals. With the insistence on playing big minutes to Bledsoe, when you've got a bloke like Lewis there who you can get out there, and again, who was better than Bledsoe in this game, has been better than Bledsoe for really long stretches of time this season, it is frustrating. I believe that Lewis can easily be a 30-minute-a-night player in this little stretch, but Stan doesn't, so that's what matters. And that's why we look at Lewis as just a guy to watch and just a guy to keep an eye on and a guy to love in dynasty formats. Steven Adams grabs 16 boards. That's really good. And especially if your league's league cons uh, consist considers what the counts. That's the word I'm looking for. Jesus, lost my mind. Um, offensive rebounds. It was really good. He had five of them. But he is just a specialist. He is just a streamer at this point. There is no reason to have him anchored to a roster and have him as a 12-team league guy. While well, James Johnson did not make us proud. In fact, zero points in 15 minutes. Now those 15 minutes all came in the first half, so the playing time was up with Lonzo Ball out. But um, 
didn't do much, and I, I just I just don't see Johnson as being. Now he's hurt his wrist. I just don't see Johnson being a guy that we need to just make sure we're holding in twelve team formats. It's just Lonzo coming back will will impact him uh, amazingly. That w- that will happen, and while Johnson can be good. He's, I just don't think the upside value in holding on to him is worth it, especially now, again, that he's hurt. Let's talk positively about the Pelicans because they did win the game. Now, when you're going against the Kings, you don't really have to do that much to get wins usually. Ingram, 34 points, six rebounds, seven assists, one steal, two blocks, 61 from the field, 90 from the line. That's an amazing performance. He has been really good. I haven't spoken about him much this season because he's been really good and he's been really consistent. Um. Look, that's just what it is. 39th ranked player this year, just really consistent. Actually, one point on Kyle I should have mentioned, he did have five fouls, so that did keep his minutes down. So that, that is, that's probably, I should have mentioned that earlier. So maybe that that's why, but he I thought he was amazing. And um, it's, it's one to watch. Zion Williamson, 30 and six, four assists and a block, 62%. Now the free throws were pretty rough, 50% there, but still a really big, unstoppable efficiency sort of night from the field. That's what Zion tends to do. Really big numbers from him once again. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football's over, but the NBA and the NHL, they're still going. And Bet Online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. Bet Online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds, and it's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today. And you can receive a 50% welcome bonus just by using our promo code Locked On on your first deposit. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. All right, let's go to the next game, the Utah Jazz. Hosting the Washington Wizards and the Jazz lose their first game at home for the year. 125-121 to the Wizards. Westbrook with a triple-double as what a surprise that is. 25-14-14, and 14, no threes, one steal, but good efficiency. 82 from the line, 53 from the field. Continues to put up some really strong numbers. While Davis Bertans played 26 minutes, had 10 points and hit three threes. He is, again, just a three-point streamerish sort of guy, but he's putting up some strong numbers at the moment. Good efficiency, good scoring, good threes. I don't hate having him on a roster. I just don't think that he's a, a guaranteed must-roster guy. Now, these things always piss me off. But Bradley Beal, ah, oh, mate, look, he's got a hip problem, and now, he, now he's got this back issue. So he's going to be on a minutes limit. 37 minutes he played. And we're going to hear Scott Brooks, oh, yeah, we just wanted the win. We had to push him through. Look, does it matter when you're this shit to push through to get one win when a bloke's got this nerve issue in his hip slash back that you've got to play in those extra minutes? I hope nothing comes of it, but Beal has gone through this before with the stress fractures where they play him 40 minutes a night and then he'd have a stress reaction in his leg. Like, that, that that's that's it's ridiculous. Now, some of it's on Beal because he'll push himself through, but you've got, to, you've got to have the balls to step up to the athletes who are always going to want to play. And say, dude, like, no, like, sit down. If they get pissed off, so be it. It's like what the Rockets doing it with John Wall. John saying, well, no, I'm going to play. And, they go, and the doctor saying, oh, okay, Johnny, oh, mate, just do what you want. Doesn't matter. Fuck your knee up. It's all going to be good. I'm like, what are you, what, what, what's going on? What are we doing? What are we playing him? Ah, oh, bullshit. Anyway, 18 minutes for Dan Gafford, 15 and 4. He did have some, uh, some foul issues in this one, but still, he should play more than this. Had some early fouls. Um, he is clearly the best center on this team, like without doubt. He played 18 minutes, Lopez played 14, and Len played 16. I would be, I'm totally fine with adding Gafford in 12-team leagues just to see where it goes. Now, I don't, have, I don't have confidence in Scott Brooks, but I'd like to see what happens. Now, all of the stands, relax. Rui Hachimura. Get that garbage out of here! Josh is young. I know he's young. Josh, he sometimes scores well. I know all that. That's true. Um, why are you so hard on him? He's only just started the game not that many years ago. All that's true. Do you get a bonus in fantasy for that? Do you get a bonus for him being young? Do you get a bonus for the fact that he started playing when he was 16? Do you get a bonus for him being a not nice bloke? No, you don't. And he's not good. He had a big run when Beal was out, when Bertans was out. Now he has four points in 30 minutes with six rebounds and shoots 29% and is 170th ranked player this season, 183rd over the last two weeks. If you want to roster him because he's a good bloke and because you think maybe he's going to be Kawhi Leonard, lol, like, then do it. But no, he's, he's not that good. Um, not precluding him from ever becoming good. I don't have confidence in it. But at this point, he's not good. And you're we're fantasy playoffs time. Whether you're in the playoffs or you're one week away, you can't be holding bullshit for a guy whose upside is so low. 
Denny Abadir had some extreme foul trouble early, just 10 minutes for him. He's not really near the 12-team uh, league mark. Well, only 10 minutes for Garrison Matthews. And we got, you know, 17 minutes of Ish Smith for whatever reason. And we got 15 minutes of Hal Neto there as well. I didn't even touch on Beal's numbers. For you. 31 shots. That's a lot of shots. 41% usage, 34 points, 5 assists. Let's talk about the Jazz who were without Conley, without Clarkson. So they played Donovan Mitchell 39 minutes. He had a 45% usage, 42 points, 6 assists. Great to get to the line that many times. 12 attempts, 10 makes, um, 44 from the field. So made a few late. Was, was struggling a little bit early. Obi doesn't like the fact that they played Mitchell that much. And it was a good game from Boyan Bogdanovich as well. 33 points in 33 minutes. 36 minutes, sorry, six triples with zero steals and zero blocks. That's fine, but we know that he hasn't been good or consistent all season. He will have these games, and then he'll have like eight points on 26% shooting, making it hard to know when to add him or hard to know when to uh, stream him in. It's There's really just no way of knowing that. I don't think he's anywhere near a must roster. With Clarkson and Ingles, sorry, Clarkson and Conley out, Ingles had 18, 4, and 6, so he should be on someone's roster. While Royce O'Neill grabbed the 12 boards and, and Rudy Gobert, not the greatest night from Gobert, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Um, yep, yeah, not a bad game from Gobert. He had 12 and 12, but no blocks, nothing particularly exciting. And now, uh, look, I've just read the Scott Brooks quote on Bradley Beal. Hold on to your butts, because this is the quote from, from uh, Scott Brooks. Um, it's from Fred Cat. Scott Brooks on Bradley Beal playing more minutes than his restriction for tonight. About four minutes into the game, he said, I can play more. I can play more. And you could tell in our meeting this morning that he had a little more pep in his step. Is Dr. Nick Riviera running their medical department? What are you you dickheads doing? Is that all Scott Brooks needs? Bradley Beal to say, I feel all right. All right. Off you go. Play your 37. Don't worry about medical advice. What do we care? You're only our best player. Just go out there and play those minutes because you said so. And because you had... Um, pep in your step. That's medically diagnosed pep, though, so I guess that's that's more important. So there you go. I knew it was going to be an absolutely stupid uh, reason, and uh, and there it is. All right, let's go on to the next game. We're going to talk uh, Chicago Bulls and the Memphis Grizzlies. 101 to Memphis, 90 to Chicago. Levine was pretty good, 21-4-9 with two blocks. Big Vucevic. It's Vucevic. It's Big Vucevic. Vucevic. Boots a bitch. Had 17 and 10. He also had five steals and a block. Didn't shoot particularly well. 37 from the field. That's rough. And Daniel Tice, Vanilla Tice, 27 minutes. That's playing minutes next to Vooch. 18 and 4. Because they're limiting Thad Young for some reason. Now, Young... Now, this is, again, one of those things I'll never understand. Young had 20 minutes. Scored 20 points. That's a usage of 35% for Thad Young. We've seen Thad Young play before, yeah? 35% usage. He did nothing else. It was like a Dwayne Bacon line. One assist, one rebound, zero steals, zero blocks, and zero threes. It is really hard to drop Young. But if he's going to keep playing like 21, 22 minutes a night, maybe we have to. Especially if they're going to keep going with Tice next to Vooch. I'm not adding Tice in 12-team leagues. I would consider it in 14-teamers, though. Patrick Williams continues to be one of the biggest negatives on offense. Two points. The two steals are nice. I think you look at him as a streamer for steals, but that's about it. But he's offering nothing offensively. Well, Thomas Sadoransky had four personal fouls. That limited him to 22 minutes. He had two points. He's, I think he is a 12-team league guy, but it really is just for that assist category. Let's talk Lowry Markkinen. Actually, I'll let Jack do that. Get that garbage out of here! Zero points, seven rebounds, two assists. I'll say it again. What is Lowry Markkinen actually good at in the NBA? And the answer is I don't know. Don't roster him in 12-team leagues. Kobe White, don't roster him in 12-team leagues. Six points in 24 minutes. While Troy Brown played 26 and had 2-8-2. and two. He's a long way from being a 12-team league guy as well. On the Grizzly side of things. Jonas Vasu Inuashas. I just love seeing this guy put up big numbers. 26 and 14, three blocks, 80% shooting. This has been here forever, this ability. It's been here forever. He is the 11th ranked player over the last two weeks. Dwayne Casey knew better though. He definitely knew better. Um, Kyle Anderson, just the five points, but five boards, six assists, four steals, and a block continues to remain must roster. Well, it was a strong bounce back from Grayson Allen. 14 points with four threes, six rebounds. I think he can have a 12-team league spot. And I think think we've got to move on from Brandon Clark. I know there's a theoretical upside. I don't really see that upside there, but nine points, nine boards, 21 minutes. I like Brandon Clark a lot. I I think he can be a really good player and a really good fantasy player. It's not happening this year. And we just have to adjust and know that it isn't happening. And then move on. Ja Morant. Much like Ben Simmons, you don't want to drop him. But he makes it hard, doesn't he? 13 points. Eh, that's shit. 
Three boards. Yep. <laughs> Ten assists. That's really nice. Zero threes, zero steals, zero blocks, 36% shooting, and another 75% free throw night. So really, again, he's a one-category player at this stage. He gets assists. I wouldn't drop him, but, man, it's it's tough, man. It is tough. He's been, he's been dog shit from a fantasy point of view all season. Like, really, really rough stuff. From Ja Morant for the majority of this year, but I, I just don't I don't think you can drop him. I don't think you can move on. All right, on to the next game. We're looking at the Phoenix Suns and the Houston Rockets. The Rockets fought back well in this one. The Suns win 126-120. They were up huge in the first half, but the Rockets fought back to make it a close contest. The Crucifix Christian Wood played 34 minutes, had 25 and 15 with three threes. Now this is more like it. 67% from the field. Still didn't block a shot, but had two steals, had three assists. Still 67 from the line, so there are still those issues there, but we like to see a bit of a bounce back. What uh, Cousin Kev, Kevin Porter Jr., 40 minutes, 22, 5, and 14 with two steals and three threes. That's fantastic. It's also awesome to see 83% from the line and 47% from the field. Now, no one's denying he's been pretty poor lately, 179th ranked player over the last two weeks, but this is a good step forward, and to do that with John Wall in the lineup is encouraging. Now, speaking of Wall, he had two games where they were just insane numbers. And he thought, oh, has he figured the shooting out? Probably not to that level. And then he did this. 13 points on 25% shooting. That's rough. Eight assists, three threes, a steal. Not a great night from Wall. Still needs to be rostered. I don't have huge confidence in his rest of season value, but we'll see. Um, the Wild Thing only played 22 minutes. Jay Sean Tate, but 10 and 5, four assists, three steals, and a block is good. While uh, Kelly Olenek had 16 and 8 with a three in 30 minutes, he remains a 12 team league guy. Kenyon Martin, also not a bad streamer. Addy had his two blocks, had nine points in 24 minutes. It's hard to see how he gets the big minutes to be a must-roster guy, but nice production nonetheless. While uh, DJ Augustin lasted just three minutes before spraining his ankle, he'd been a nice source of assists as a stream option or 14-16 to 16 team league guy. Avery Bradley and Armani Brooks are the guys who stepped up. Now, Brooks had 14 points in 14 minutes with four triples. Shot 83%, which is obviously unsustainable. It was a massive plus 11. If Augustin misses time, will they play Brooks? Keep, just keep an eye on him. Those 20-team leaguers, keep an eye on Armani Brooks. For the Suns, Devin Booker, 24-7-7, seven and seven, while Jay Crowder, he went 8 of 9 from 3 in the first half. Of course, he missed all of three of his second half shots, but 26 points, 8 triples, 2 assists and a steal. We know what time it is. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. That's a great game. He can be rostered if you're looking for threes, but we know the inconsistency is going to bite you in the dick pretty clearly. Now, he only he did foul out. That's why he only played the 25 minutes, while Chris Paul had nine points in his 27 minutes, 10 assists and two steals. Not you know, Paul's best night. Ayton was all right. Missed all three of his free throws, which is troubling. 18 and eight with three steals. And Cam Johnson continues to play a little bit better. 11 points, three threes, three steals. I think we're a long way away from him being a 12-team league guy, but playing at a higher level. While Bridges only had six points, on 29% shooting nonetheless, but three steals and a block keeps his value afloat. A clear to me must roster player, even though there have been some struggles from him of late. All right, let's go on to the last game of the night. Pretty somber end to this game. The Nuggets lose 107-116, but everything overshadowed by the headmaster, Jamal Murray, suffering what looks like a pretty serious knee injury with 50 seconds left in this game. Now, he'd been out with knee soreness on his right knee, this was his left knee, planted to do a layup, um, and it just sort of buckled. I don't know what the injury could be. ACL, MCL, patella tendon, I, I don't know. But when you're on non-contact and you put your knee down and it just gives way, um, it didn't look particularly hyperextended, which I guess is more of a worry that it wasn't just that. It, it could end up being that, but it, it you would have to imagine that you're talking multiple weeks at, at the best case scenario here for Murray. Um, just horrible stuff to see. Um, because again, look, this is a Nuggets team who was you know, pushing for a title. And a uh, real chance that Murray is not available in the playoffs, unfortunately. His return was all right. Didn't shoot particularly well, 33%, 17, 4, and 4. But the question then goes to how do they replace him? Well, Faku played 21 minutes and had six points, two threes, and four steals. And Monty Morris had 10 points in 21 minutes. So it's just going to be those two guys that carry those minutes. Campazzo has been the guy who's been starting in place of Murray. Morris has been coming back from his own injury. I think the likelihood of Morris being a 12-team league guy is higher than Campazzo. So if I'm adding someone, it is probably Morris, even though it might be shaky initially. I don't I don't mind at making that out of Morris just now. Faku can be an assist and steal streamer like a TJ McConnell. I don't think he'll play 29 minutes a night. Uh, I think they'd like to give Morris into that role. It's just a shame that this shit happened, really. Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic, 27, 12, and 8. Good night from him. While Aaron Gordon, just 23 minutes. 
you know what to do. Like he's he's done. Twelve team leagues, forget it. Nine, six, and three, one, three. Sixty percent shooting is great, but when you take tw- uh, five shots, it doesn't mean shit. So uh, Aaron Gordon. Get that garbage out of here. Maga Porter was pretty strong, 24 and 9, while Farton Will Barton, really low usage for Barton, 9, 1 and 2. I would still hold Barton. Morris, as I mentioned, 10 points in his 21 minutes. Now, that overshadows a a ridiculous night from Steph Curry. Pass Wilt Chamberlain for the Warriors' leading scorer. 53 points in 36 minutes, 10 triples, 7 rebounds, 58 from the field, 94 from the line, just insane numbers. Draymond was ridiculous too, 18, 7 and 7 with 4 steals. Wiggins had 17 points in 41 minutes. This is all without Kelly Oubre as well. Bazemore stepped up. And while Ubre is out, Bazemore has some 12-team value. 14 points and three threes with a steal in 36 minutes for Bays. And Kavon Looney, 30, I never thought I'd see the day that Kavon Looney plays 30 minutes. 31 minutes for Looney, 10 rebounds, three assists and a steal. Now, I don't think he's a 12-team league ad, but 14 to 15, or 15, Jesus, 14 to 16-team leagues, he's going to get a lot of run here. Toscano Anderson can be a deep league guy as well. 2-5-3 and three in his 24 minutes, while uh, Jordy Poole had just the four points. I thought he could do a little bit more without Ubre, but that did not come to pass unfortunately, for uh, for Jordy. All right, let's now move across and uh, and have a look at the top ads over the top last 24 hours. Taylor Horton, Tucker up 22%. That's fine for the back-to-back, but I think we can move on there. Mo Bamba, as I said earlier, um, the worry there is the hip. And if you need to make moves because you're in the playoffs, I would be worried about him playing the next couple. So maybe that's a move. I think Dan Gafford's a great ad. I think Reggie Jackson's a great ad. KCP up 14%. He had a good game today. I don't believe he's a must-roster 12-team league guy, but like Horton Tucker, the value of him is the back-to-back Monday to Tuesday. So that's why I guess he was added there. In terms of drops, Wiseman down 17%. Yep, yeah, we don't think he's playing this season. Diallo down 13%. Yeah, look, just getting really weirdly used in Detroit. Hayes down 12%, Killian Hayes. Yeah, look, again, the minutes dropping down as Dwayne Casey continues to do dumb shit continually. Malachi Flynn down 9% and DeAndre Bembry down 9%. That's the return of Lowry. And then Ananobi comes back. Really hard to see them having really any 12-team league value at this point. Let's look at the top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Taj Gibson at number one. Drew Eubanks at number two. Taj can have be a 12-team league guy. Korkmaz at number three. Hit some threes. Nice three-point streamer. Markeith Morris has some 12-team value as well. Kenyon Martin for his blocks as a streamer. Corwell Pope, strong game, but I'm not really buying that. Um, Cam Johnson in Phoenix, nice nice game, but again, I don't really buy him as anything more than like a 16-teamer. Bain is a nice deep league three-point streamer. Campazzo, we just talked about, um, could be an option for steals and assists at the moment. And then um, and then Grayson Allen, uh, who I do think is a 12-team league option. Guys, let's move into DFS now for Tuesday's games. All right, just six games on, we're going to look at here on Tuesday in the NBA. The Clippers and the Pacers' first game up. Paul, uh, not Paul George, Kawhi Leonard is out and Miles Turner is out. So, yeah, look for Luke Kennard to perhaps get another start and look for that weird Edmund Sumner, Justin Holiday pairing uh, in Indiana for that one with Goga, hopefully getting another opportunity to drop five blocks in 12 minutes like he did last game. The Hawks and the Raptors, big names out there. Collins, Hunter, Snell, Dunn. Danilo Gallinari is also doubtful for Atlanta. Trey Young is questionable. That's the biggest name, of course. While for Toronto, Fred Van Vliet remains sidelined. But OG Ananobi will be returning. So let's see how the Flynn minutes look with Ananobi back as well. The Lakers and the Hornets. This is a back-to-back for the Lakers. Kuzma and Matthews returned to action on Monday. So they should be okay to go here. While uh, Charlotte PJ Washington Jr. luckily is probable. So that ankle injury doesn't appear to be too serious. The Thunder and the Jazz. Back-to-back for Utah. The Jazz are 17-point favorites in the back-to-back. The total is 223. Mike Conley should return in this one after resting on Monday. Uh, don't know if Jordan Clarkson plays. Probably not. For OKC, uh, Alexei Pokyshevsky is out, as is Isaiah Roby, as is Shea Gildas-Alexander, as is Josh Hall, but Dort will play. Um, and Darius Baisley, of course, is back there. And uh, Baisley, let's see if he can replicate what he did in that first game back where he shot 75% from three and had five assists. I'm going to say he won't. But let's see how he looks. Boston and Portland. Ivan Fournier remains out for Boston. While the Blazers are pretty okay. I imagine Nurkic is going to be on some sort of minutes limit again. But health-wise, they're not too bad. The Blazers, one-point favorite here. The total is 227. While the last game is Miami at Phoenix. Obviously, not great news on Victor Oladipo and his knee. Maybe he's not even back this regular season. There's significant worry about that. It's not an ACL or anything like that, but some definite worry about his value. So Kendrick Nunn is going to be the starter there again, while it is a back-to-back for the Suns. But in general, apart from Abdul Nadir, they're pretty healthy. The Suns are three-point favorites here, and the total is 215. 
In terms of Fangio values, I'm really liking Zubats with Ibarka out. I should have mentioned that. Serge Ibarka's out. I like Kyle Lowry, Marcus Morris. I like um, Rob Williams uh, a little bit. I like uh, Rudy Gobert at 8,000. I like uh, Paul George at 9,000. I don't hate a flyer on Moses Brown, the sea putter. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Um, Rogier down at 7,000 looks all right. Lillard is an, an upside play at 88, considering his struggles. Nurkic at 56. Nurkic is playing at a really high level at the moment, so he could be an option for us. Uh, Capella at 93, that's probably a bit too high. Uh, Adebayo looks all right. Devontae at 66 looks all right. And I like Herder at 55 if Trey Young is out. Uh, Jalen Brown at 8,000 also looks pretty strong to me. That'll do it for today's show. Don't forget, subscribe. Or follow, actually, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. You can find us over there at Odyssey and also on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, ring the notification bell, and leave your comments down below. All you sex bots, don't need to leave those comments, but everyone else can leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.